Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Director of Strategic Initiatives, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Christopher Wallace. Good morning, everyone, and I hope everyone's feeling okay on this uh, lovely Thursday morning after the, the big party last night. It's always a bit of a challenge to, uh, uh, to get folks to come in attentive and feeling good, but it looks like most of you are, so we really appreciate that. You know, this week, we've learned a lot about digital transformation, how to build new businesses, how to scale existing businesses, but we also learned about disruption. There was a great plenary speech um, yesterday with, led by Lucas Wilson, uh, Williams, I'm sorry, um, about how IT is not only transforming industries, but also has the ability to transform lives. There were some great examples given when Premel, the founder of Kiva, talked about how their, their social impact enterprise is using microloans to transform the lives of people. Uh, and uh, Neil from, from Harvard was talking about how hacking was used to disrupt cur current political processes and transform lives in a positive way there as well. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, well, actually leading back to HP and our founders, has a long legacy of social and environmental responsibility. And actually, one of my favorite quotes was given by David Packard back in 1949, where he said, the betterment of our society is not a job to be left to a few, but is a responsibility to be shared by us all. And really what David was talking about long before his time was this concept of businesses creating shared value which is a paradigm where businesses, when they're actually operating as businesses and not as philanthropic donors, actually have the ability to have the most impact. Back in last November, when we split into two companies and Meg was really articulating the vision for Hewlett Packard Enterprise, she talked about how collaborative people, transformative ideas, and empowering technology converged in this way that it could really have profound impact, both for businesses and for people as well. Our leadership came to us at this time and they said, you know, we're really doing a lot of great things. Um, we've got a number of different initiatives, but we would really like to focus in a way that we combined forces and we aligned in the strategic way where we tied together this concept of people, ideas, and technology, where that was really at the core. And so what we did is we focused on creating a new initiative that had kind of a key some key points in mind in terms of a vision. We really wanted to create an ecosystem for social change. Um, we wanted to leverage the global reach of our, of our employees. We're in 175 different countries. We wanted to utilize our technology to connect people across value chains, prioritize the simplicity of solutions, and innovate through our products. So what was the problem statement? Well, most folks are familiar with this concept of the digital divide, and the concept has actually evolved over time. Whereas 15 years ago, the digital divide meant whether or not somebody was connected to the internet, now that's actually evolved to what I would refer to almost as the digital services divide, or even the app divide. Um, some are even referring to the future of something known as the data divide. Now that we have the proliferation of mobile devices, there are so many people around the world connected to the internet. It's really this concept of tapping into things like employment, financial services, health and educational services, bringing those people onto the digital highway, tapping into the services that all of us in this room enjoy, um, getting them to the point where we're actually able to transform their lives as well. An interesting st statistic is that you know, out of the world's estimated 7 billion people, 6 billion actually have access to mobile phones, while only 4.5 billion have access to proper sanitation, working toilets essentially. So we know that the potential for technology to break down barriers is really limitless. So what we did was, as opposed to focusing on any one given specific problem, we decided to challenge the global community. We asked them quite simply, what software applications and digital services would you create to improve the lives of others? And we specifically made that as broad as possible so that we could filter in and feed in as many ideas as we could. We're not experts in social impact, but we are experts in technology. So it was about helping those that were helping others. And the results were quite profound. We, we launched 
back at Discover actually in London in December. And within 12 weeks, we had over 400 ideas that were submitted from organizations from around the world and 130 detailed business plans on how they would actually implement technology to improve the lives of others in different categories. We really had kind of three key buckets that came in. The first bucket was kind of a greenfield project. These were, these were new, innovative ideas. They had not been executed yet. It was essentially almost like an idea that an entrepreneur would bring to a VC. That was kind of the key, bu the key first bucket. The second bucket were existing concepts that were actually already in work, but they had not been digitized. An example might be a savings group in Africa, for instance, where you had a group of women that were actually formulating savings programs, but they were using a pen and paper based system. It had not yet been digitized. In the third bucket were existing solutions that were really looking to either scale or accelerate beyond or increase levels of functionality beyond where they were. And it was kind of interesting. We had actually anticipated that most of the ideas would come in with a clear definition of the underpinning technology associated with them. But then we realized a lot of these organizations came to us and they said, we would really like you to help us transform. How can you do this? And that's actually when I bumped into a, bumped into a, a colleague of mine in the hall and we began to talk about it. And I'll introduce him here. His name is Mike De La Cruz and he actually runs the global application delivery business and said, you know, Mike, we have this issue where we're really looking to have profound impact, but a lot of these folks have amazing ideas, but they aren't quite sure how to get there from a technology perspective. A lot of our executives are very keen on tapping into the power of the crowd to help co-innovate, and that's where Mike and I kind of came up with what I'll introduce him to explain, kind of the next level of the program. Mike, would you come on up? Okay, hi everybody. <clears throat> okay, so uh, just briefly before we uh, want to loop back to where Chris uh, uh, ended up with in terms of how we came up with this, but you know the result was we did get these 400 different ideas coming from all around the world, and 140 of these became uh, detailed business cases. So the thinking was, well, how are we going to get there, right? How are we going to get there given where we were a few months ago? Uh, because Chris and I only met, you know, uh, just earlier part of the year. And we thought about the fact that we're going to have to approach this very, very differently. We knew that we had to take the ideas and the deep domain expertise that were in the nonprofits, that understood their domain, that had deep insights into their domain. And we knew we had to match them up with a diverse group of expertise in our own company. Uh, anywhere from diverse backgrounds in diverse countries, from various business and technical disciplines. Okay, so challenge number one. We also knew that once we identified these people, we needed to be able to bring the volunteers together very quickly to collaborate with the nonprofits and uh, come up with these detailed business cases and solutions. And we needed to be able to do that in a process that would get them from zero to 60 in a couple of weeks. So we were running two to three week sprints with a nonprofit with a team just, just formed for, um, virtually to come up with these solutions. Okay, and we had to do that at scale as you see from uh, what we've been able to accomplish. And so what we did was we turned to the power of design thinking. You know, this is the solution based approach to coming up with creative new ideas and solutions. And we, but we didn't want to train everybody in design thinking. We just wanted to do it, right? We wanted it embedded in our process. The other thing we did was we said, okay, let's take design thinking and let's amplify and scale that with the power of the crowd, crowdsourcing, okay? And overall, over the last few months, we've been able to engage 4,000 volunteers uh, in our company. Uh, these are software developers, uh, QA architects, uh, marketing professionals, HR professionals, people in finance, to all come together and engage on these uh, problem and opportunity areas. Right? And when you, look at, uh, when you look at what they were able to accomplish, you know, one volunteer told me how great it was to actually leverage her professional expertise to create some social impact 
and to be able to connect with and meet with many people across the team, cross organizational boundaries, and make something new happen. In fact, a lot of the volunteers were just like her. They're very engaged. So of these 4,000 volunteers over the last three months, um, these 4,000 volunteers on average spent 30 minutes on the platform documenting their ideas, their solutions, their proposals, and adding to and extending others. And this is just the work they were doing, say, if you will, on the platform. Uh, this is not the work, this is not, does not capture the work they were doing to kind of innovate the idea among different teams and also with the nonprofits themselves. Okay, so we really kind of leverage this power of the crowd and the results have been pretty cool, very awesome to see, right? And we're hoping that, you know, as these results are ones that actually help improve the lives of many, I think that there are also some lessons in these results and in this program in terms of how you might be able to take uh, the power of the talent in your organizations and in your ecosystem and apply them, now, not just to social problems, but maybe to business problems that you have in your companies. And that's why we are so excited to share this message with you today. So let's take a look at some of the outcomes, the positive outcomes, and they have been awesome. You know, one example that I like, uh, because it was my very first one that I got involved in, was a US advocacy group, US-based advocacy group called Results. And what Results does is it takes uh, citizens like you and me and uh, trains us to become advocates for policies that help end poverty, right? So citizens like you and me, maybe we don't think we can be involved in the democratic process, in the process, right? And uh, influence decision makers. We get trained, we get help, we get access, and then we would actually meet with policymakers and advocate for uh, decisions that would provide uh, access to opportunities, economic opportunities, uh, health care, to education, uh, to people that are in poverty, and to help eliminate it. But they had a problem. You know, the problem that Results had was that they had to find these citizens, um, and they wanted a much more efficient way to do that than cold calling, say, local organizations, or talking to their local universities, or tapping people they'd worked with before to find new uh, potential volunteers and advocates. So they were literally trying to uh, look for needles in the haystack, right? And maybe your organization's doing that too. You're looking for needles in the haystack, maybe consumers that you're targeting, or maybe people that you're doing uh, recruiting for uh, and try to bring them into the organization, right? So they wanted to find solutions to uh, finding those needles in the haystacks. And uh, what we had was we had an innovation consultant in Costa Rica working with this uh, US-based organization. The consultant was uh, Hugo Robles. He organized the community uh, to come up with 49 kind of solution ideas to work with results on. Um, these are all big data ideas of how to mine uh, social networks to kind of find these advocates and these citizens or the potential advocates and citizens. And the winning idea was actually uh, uh, something that allowed the organization, would allow the organization to use keyword searches on social networks to be able to target them uh, for recruiting prop, uh, purposes, right? And so, you know, we had great, uh, great outcomes there, great feedback, and all of those ideas kind of contributed in a very quick way to help the organization think about their problem differently and connect it with potential actionable solutions that they can implement, okay? Another good example, oh, sorry, can I go back one? <clears throat> Another good example is with Close to Good. So this was a, 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 a network of nonprofits and social enterprises in South Africa, okay? And this network of social enterprises and nonprofits in South Africa, they ran a closed recycling program, right, that uh, provided uh, both clothes to people that need them, but also uh, employment for a lot of people and livelihood for many people in South Africa, including lots of folks with uh, disabilities, right? And they wanted some ideas, some solutions that would make this distributed process where they um, leverage a lot of employees, of many of them with disabilities, to make this distributed process a lot more efficient, to help people with disabilities that were working um, on the program you know, all the way through the process of working with schools, collecting uh, donations and clothes, repacking them, uh, distributing them through other micro enterprises to be able to be sold, okay? And that process had a distributed group uh, that had to become much more efficient if they wanted to scale and be more successful, 
right? And so they thought, well, this is perfect. You know, they're distributed, they're mobile. What are the kinds of mobile technologies and solutions we can actually apply? We know the problem, we know the opportunity, but how do we come up with solutions? And so we had an innovation consultant. Uh, this was Brian Santiago, based in Manila. Uh, working with this organization in Africa, tapping a global ecosystem around the world of uh, different talent. And they worked on almost 30 ideas of solutions uh, around the mo mobility space to help make this process more efficient for close to good. It's, it ranged anywhere from 3D barcodes that could be used to kind of automatically uh, tag uh, clothes coming in so people wouldn't have to write things down and make the whole process more efficient to uh, smart scales so folks with uh, disabilities didn't have to kind of write down uh, anything you know in the whole process that were connected right the winning idea was a an idea called tag and scan that we helped develop uh, further into a business case and a proposal with the with the organization that essentially did that it helped uh, quickly kind of tag and scan uh, clothing that came in and made the whole process from uh, collecting all the way through the distribution much more efficient, right? And so this example might be relevant you know, to, to uh, your organizations where you might have a distributed workforce, you might have inf inefficiencies in the process, and you're looking for mobile applications that uh, might make that whole thing better. Maybe you're even working with folks outside of the organization, uh, partners in the ecosystem, right? So it's incredibly exciting. Uh, there are a lot more examples. I'd love to show you a video uh, so that you can hear about three more of these great examples. Let's roll it, team. Solving complex problems demands diverse perspectives. That's why at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, we are uniting people, ideas, and technology to solve the world's toughest challenges. The Living Progress Challenge invited the global community to bring forward great ideas that answered the question, what software applications and digital services would you create to improve people's lives? Almost 400 ideas and more than 130 detailed proposals were received from around the world, touching every aspect of society. Here's a look at just three of the bold, innovative proposals submitted. True testament to the power of the crowd and co-innovation. Natural disasters affect families, communities, and economies. And each year, thousands of affected businesses never recover and close their doors forever. But the Global Disaster Preparedness Center aims to change that. Their concept is a mobile app that will help businesses take simple steps toward recovery and continuity after a disaster. Of the Business Continuity Initiative, we see an opportunity to reach out and support small and medium-sized businesses to help them be better prepared for disasters so they aren't disrupted, so that they're more resilient, so that they can actually come back online and provide the services at the community level. The app will guide small business owners through a step-by-step -step process. The adaptive technology platform can be localized for different cultures and languages. It will assess the business owner's current situation, identify areas of improvement, and provide a suite of tools for their use. This is gonna help their communities who will become more resilient. Their employees will be more confident. The uh, communities themselves will be able to rely on these businesses to, to come online and provide their services and, and the, the products that they uh, offer. Uh, this will also help the response community because it will reduce the costs of, of disasters. It will reduce the amount of support that's needed to provide uh, at the community level. It will, it will make communities recover faster. Samosource is a nonprofit social business that provides dignified digital work to women and youth living in poverty around the world. Since 2008, Samosource has provided work to over 7,000 people. When you include their families, that's over 30,000 people moved out of poverty. Samosource employees provide image classification and annotation services to global companies. Employees regularly work on projects requiring the annotation of thousands, if not millions, of images. When we're pitching to new clients um, and trying to win projects, we're competing with well-established BPOs that have college-educated workers. 
So the way that we bridge that gap is through training, through our project management layer, and also our technology. One of the solutions that we put forth with this proposal is to help us get over that barrier and to stay competitive, and again, to allow us to hire more workers in the places that we operate, which are in East Africa, Haiti, and in India. The SAMA source concept will leverage and customize the predictive analysis and image recognition capability of HPE's Haven on-demand APIs. An example of this in action, analyzing aerial footage of an African national park to identify both the number of elephants and potential poachers. When deployed, the project will enable SAMA source to scale its services, expand its clientele, and help lift more of the world's most disadvantaged out of poverty. Millions of people around the world have almost no contact with the formal health system. According to UNICEF, the births of nearly 230 million children under the age of five have never been officially registered. Yet continued engagement with a formal health system throughout pregnancy, birth, and the first nine months of life for an infant can dramatically reduce maternal and infant mortality rates. BirthTrack is a clinic-based tool running on Android devices that will collect basic information and monitor women throughout their pregnancy and delivery. By registering newborns upon delivery, we can create a national birth registry, which will allow us to seamlessly integrate children into early childhood services, such as immunizations. Using a VaxTrack tablet PC loaded with the BirthTrack app, pregnancies can be registered and births can be recorded in near real time. VaxTrack can then push regular SMS reminders directly to new mothers, notifying them when their children are due for vaccinations. As hard to reach pregnant women and newborns are registered through BirthTrack into formal healthcare systems, a wealth of information will become available, increasing the ability to monitor maternal issues and provide much needed care. Combining the power of great ideas around the world with the expertise and power of HPE technology. Together, we can help the Living Progress Challenge reach the goal of changing one million lives through the power of digital inclusion. Okay, I know it's Thursday morning, but what do you guys think? Hopefully you've seen um, you know, something that really cool, right, in terms of how uh, we've tapped the power of the crowd uh, in the process of design thinking to be able to help uh, impact and make a big social impact and help nonprofits with the right domain expertise in the areas that they work in to really kind of leverage technology uh, to achieve their missions, right? What I also hope is that you guys have some ideas maybe, it gets you kind of going thinking about uh, how you might be able to tap uh, your own crowd, your own uh, talent across your organizations, maybe in your ecosystem. Um, you know, great to uh, uh, impact uh, socially the world around you, but also maybe to tackle some of the business challenges where you're looking for some good creativity uh, and want to tap the talent across your organization to help figure out you know, how, you can, how you can address those problems and challenges. So uh, uh, as you see, a lot of the solutions that came up you know, leverage, say, big data or mobility or Internet of Things, the kinds of uh, themes and topics that you probably heard a lot about here. But here's one way that you can kind of bring it together and action it uh, in a way that's uh, very creative and helps you uh, kind of address some very high opportunity areas. So with that, I'd love to bring Chris back on the stage and we can sum up. Hello. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, this is exciting for me for a number of different reasons. One, it shows us about the power of technology, um, how we not only have the ability to disrupt industries, but we have the ability to improve the lives of others around the world. So that's something for me that's very exciting. We know that, that as sort of the millennial generation is really entering into the workforce, that these are elements that really resonate with them, kind of rethinking the way business is done. We, you know, they talked about disruption on the stage the other day, how these businesses are really transforming the way that people are affected in a real positive way. Uh, and also what I think is really exciting is this concept of solution-based thinking, right? This was a problem that Mike and I sort of came up with that was presented by these NGOs, where I think often 
we focus on technology first and not the solution or the outcome. So this is the way that we actually focused with the outcome in mind and brought together this diverse group of talented different people to come up with the underpinning technology that would be the fastest, best, most efficient way to get us to that solution. So we're thrilled to that. We've announced the 21st cut of winners. We're actually out on the floor here. There's a Living Progress Challenge booth. We've announced the first 20. We're gonna be having a demonstration event in New York that we're really excited about on August 3rd, where we're actually building prototypes for those first 20. Uh, and then the, up to 10 of those, we're actually gonna demonstrate and pitch in a fast pitch um, their, their solution to a committee of HPE executives, and we're gonna choose up to five to actually build and deploy around the world to impact these folks' lives. So with that, uh, we would love to encourage you to continue the discussion with us and continue to think about how you could tap into your own crowd as well as the external crowd in order to improve your businesses and, if, if possible, the lives of other people around the world. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. We hope to hear from you.